Welcome to the fourth installment of my Factory Showcase series, where I discuss rooms and areas of the factory while sharing insight about how I built them. This room really needs no introduction. The chocolate room is probably the most iconic aspect of any Willy Wonka media, and in my opinion, the 2005 movie has the best iteration of the room. The chocolate room is by far my favorite part of the movie, so I really wanted to make sure my version looked as good as it could. In the movie, the room is essentially a long horizontal cylinder, so the room ends up being long, but not very wide. This creates a great effect of distance with the chocolate waterfall. The room is 178 blocks long, 100 blocks wide at its widest point of the cylinder, and roughly 70 blocks tall, which makes it the second largest room in my factory. The room is constructed with the same brick material as the exterior of the factory. I also made sure to model these protruding supports, as well as the sunken lights in the ceiling. The chocolate waterfall is the focal point of the room and is built dead center. The damn looking wall that the waterfall flows over was accurately modeled to slope upwards the higher up the falls you go. The bottom of the wall is carved out to allow for a splash zone. Other details that are depicted on the wall are these two flanking cylinders with long glass windows and these brutalist looking protruding bits. The functioning chocolate waterfall, as well as the chocolate river, is accomplished using a mod called Colored Water. Speaking of the chocolate river, I tried my best to replicate the path the river takes with its manually carved out appearance, as well as modeling the various overhangs in their correct locations. To make the chocolate river banks, I used a mix of black and brown terracotta, Soul Soil was a potential candidate to model the chocolate, but the texture looks too repetitive for my liking. To make the river feel like a potential threat, like in the movie, if the player is not careful, the river is five blocks deep, deep enough for a certain pipe to potentially suck you up, wink wink. Next, let's move on to the landscaping. One of my favorite aspects of this room is that it's essentially an outdoor environment completely enclosed indoors. I spent an unreasonable amount of time carefully sculpting the flowing hills to mimic the movie. I'm super happy with how the terrain slowly descends to the river. Both arch bridges are also present, with the second one offering a great view of the waterfall. Something that I've slowly been going back and improving is the shaping of the exposed chocolate landscape. Originally, these were modeled as flat walls, like these still unrenovated areas. But the new areas now have much more depth to them, and I think it looks a lot better. For the grass, I used lime concrete. I'm probably one of the only Wonka factory builders that uses this for my grass. But the color of the lime concrete is almost an exact match to the grass that covers the room in the movie. Even though the texture of grass blocks, moss, or even lime sand or lime wool would give a better grassy texture than the lime concrete, I just can't look past the perfect color of the lime concrete, and that's why it's my preference and material for the grass. Fun fact, the edible grass is canonically called swudge. The room is littered with many wacky looking candies, like candy trees, candy mushrooms, candy canes, candy pumpkins, fudge plants, candy sticks, and many more. Originally, I only placed these decorations in their correct spots seen in the film, but this left the room feeling too empty. The rolling meadow landscape in the chocolate room in the movie is actually pretty barren. There is a lot of empty space between the props, so that's what I tried replicating. But this was one of those things that didn't translate well to Minecraft. The room just ended up looking unfinished, so little by little, I went back and added in more candy decorations to slowly but surely fill out the room. I still go back from time to time and added more candies, so in a way this room is never truly finished, but I certainly think it looks good how it is now. Another key item that I recreated is the candy viking ship. In my earlier videos you'll notice that it used to look quite different. I never liked my original design. So a few months ago I removed it and created this much more accurate looking version. The chocolate river is meant to be traversed to the other areas of the factory, like in the film, but the viking ship is purely decorative. The way you traverse the river is by using a cherry boat. 
The thought crossed my mind to make the Viking ship functional, but for several reasons I decided against it. Mainly because the ship is so big and would be too clunky to traverse the chocolate tunnels in any sensible way. Fans of the 2005 movie Tie-In Game, if there are any out there, may recognize that I included the secondary door to the chocolate room that you use in the game. I included this hidden door so that there was a sensible way to connect the chocolate room to other areas of the factory that didn't require use of the chocolate river. So while this wasn't in the movie, I think it's hidden enough that its inclusion isn't too egregious. So that's the chocolate room. I hope this video proved to be an interesting look at the factory's most famous room. Stay tuned for more showcase videos in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.